welcome to Renaissance Charge videos again and this is our little workshop of some of our little kits that we were making here and this is a relatively new one where we have our little window motor um, magnetic motor I guess what we want to call it, our mini but we have the, the coils beefed up here to 18 gauge wires and we got two of them so this is a much more powerful unit in fact Running this off of a 12 volt battery is um, it's pretty fast and um, really I designed it for these remote control uh, vehicles such as the watercraft that we showed in the previous video. So I'm going to show this again but this time we have a little box here with a little control and LED showing the pulse and um, in this case I have two hall switches. Um, that are offset from each other and the coils are offset so it mostly starts on its own. Um, in order to do it more ideally um, I was trying to work with um, just a little timing hub there. My magnets are a little bit too small on that one to make it ideal um, and to mount it and all that. So I just settled for this right now so you can see the hulls are um, mounted. So the only place where it won't self-start is right about there sometimes. So, um, and that can be, you know, moved around a little bit to to create an ideal startup if that's what's desired. Um, this has the capability of going to higher voltage. 24 volts, but I don't really recommend that because it is so powerful. This thing will spin at over 50,000 RPM and um, it needs to be loaded down in order to be pushed harder. We can see the amperage that will result too in um, when we run this and we adjust the, the pot setting here. So we can see again the, the basic instructions um, and then, of course, a diagram here of the circuit layout. Now, what I don't show in this diagram is the um, the control part where we are um, breaking up the pulse width. So what we're going to do is look at it running very gently. This is the charging battery, and this is the run battery. And um, if you run a lower voltage input, in this case the charging battery won't charge as noticeably as if they're equal voltages. So like I said this runs easily at 7 volts and per puts out a lot of power for those electric uh, remote control vehicles. Um, so let's look at here, we can look at the the voltages and the amperage So we can hear it thumping away one amp and it charges the battery right away. So we can see the light if I turn it slightly. That's the lowest setting really. Still charging a battery, still running a load, but very lightly. Once we turn it up a little bit more. You can see the rates change. And after about 5 amps, it kind of gets out of control without a load on it. I mean, you can see it vibrating on the table. You see the charge rate going really high. Now I can go a lot higher. 15 amps, but like I said, we don't have a sufficient charging battery on there and our input battery is definitely not rated for that kind of pull. So now you can see that I've turned it down and now our amps have, have gone down significantly. They're holding at much less since we got it up to speed. You know, of course, once I load it down, it's going to go back into that same startup mode. So anyway, um, this is what we're going to do 
with this upcoming um, motor uh, right here. This is the mid-grade motor. I have a made this for a, a scooter. We designed the end plate here to fit on your typical scooter. Um, so this is a one-way turning um, gear here. So this will be, I realized that when I made this, I really made the the rotor way bigger than it needed to be. So this is actually more um, suitable for a, f uh, a golf cart um, to be running. And uh, so, so really this could actually probably go up to a couple of horsepower. Um, and we'll probably make it a bigger case for when we do that. It's just my little thing telling me that my meter is going to turn off. Anyway, um, so what we're looking to do is do the same kind of control on this, uh, more parts of course, and um, more careful control than what we have on this little kit. So this is kind of the three stages, the little mini kit, this kit, which is you know, not really having a, a suitable frame to it. Whereas then we have a, a stainless steel outer casing here and an aluminum case or uh, end plates here. And um, what I'll do is I'll show you the rotor here. So here we have the rotor again. This is just like our industrial motor and uh, the magnets fit in here. But really, I don't need the, the all eight magnets. Um, we want really only four magnets in here um, with the smaller application for the scooter and we only need um, we only need three quarter horsepower no one third horsepower to run the scooter um, this is is way overkill so I didn't really want to make um, too small of a motor I wanted to make a motor that was capable of lighter and, and heavier applications so um, I mean this motor right here it's definitely capable of running a scooter if it had a bigger shaft and um, you know it was more solidly connected. I mean we were easily pushing over 20 amps on this at 12 volts and um, you know that is that's a lot of power. So what else can I say here? Um, we are still charging as I said and we'll turn off the motor here and um, look at the voltages. And um, the other thing is, so we can see the voltage is stabilizing. Well, the other thing is, this does have a heat sensor inside so that if the MOSFETs get hot enough, it will shut down uh, temporarily to cool off. So uh, I adopted not to put a fan in there because the MOSFETs can handle quite a bit of power um, without fan cooling and really this motor shouldn't be run um, at the higher amperage level anyway so um, but you know if you needed to do that you could blow some air through through there like I said on our bigger motors we do water cooling and uh, very careful thermal management um, on these smaller kits are more like toys it's not really as important um, so yeah I think you can see um, it, it. This functions as we pretty much wanted it to function, giving you some speed control, and um, you could run this again instead of the input being from a battery directly. You could also run it through your um, remote controls, uh, car vehicles controller, which is what we really made this for in the first place. But offered this. Um, as a, a different type of controller in the meantime. So there you have it, and uh, I think that covers everything. Thank you for watching.